And I'll just, I'll talk about the difficult one. The difficult one is number two. Now, there was a young woman who was a psychologist, the woman in the blue there, I think. No, I, t yeah, you come here, please. This is, again, the, one of the biggest lessons I learned as a lawyer. And uh, this is my client, Mrs. Bell. I've been her lawyer, her several husband's lawyers, her children's lawyers, her cousin's lawyers, and she's known me for about 15 years. Her son is about to go to jail for a long time. It's an armed robbery charge. I'll explain later. Uh, and so I've got Dr. Conry, who's the neuropsych assessment person. She's doing me a favor. She's in court. This happens in a crowded hallway outside a courtroom. Dr. Conry's trying to do a quick little assessment of my kid. He's a kid. He's 25 years old. And she says, David, I need confirmed maternal drinking. Can you ask her if she was drinking while she's pregnant? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'll just rush over there and say, were you drunk then? Um, and... Well, I, we have some history. She's known me for 10 years. And I know when her son was conceived, because they were living in this place. Do you remember Expo 86? Well, what we did in Vancouver was quite wonderful. We knocked down all these apartment buildings where the poor people lived and put up this wonderful thing called Expo 86. Her place that she lived in for 15 years was bulldozed. And that's the winter I've calculated when her son was born, or conceived. And so this is what I tried, and I recommend you do this. You may find your own way to do it, but... You've got to talk about maternal drinking. And it works like this. Now, Mrs. Bell, you know your son's going to jail? Yep. And you know that Judge Smith is not the best judge. We didn't do we have a bad draw. Oh, really? Yes, he's, it, it's, it's going to be years. Yes. Most likely going to be years. And we have some history. And so I need to talk to you about a very difficult thing. You know the doctor's over there, and he's talking to, to your son. Mm -hmm. And you know we're trying to get some information in front of the judge to hopefully reduce the time that he's in jail. Mm -hmm. Now, I need to ask you some difficult questions. Mm -hmm. I need to talk about, you know when they knocked down your apartment building with the bulldozers and they put up the big fancy yeah. German pavilion? Yeah. You remember that? Yeah, it was now, I know, I know you've had some hard times. A few years ago, you had that real bad time there. I need to know, and I'm over here, Mrs. Bell. I need to know if you were drinking that winter. I know it's a long time ago. I, I need to know if, if, if you were um, Southern Comfort. I need to know if it was you, if you were drinking a lot of Southern Comfort that winter. Yeah, a bit, a bit. Yeah. Yeah. It was really stressful. It's been like 10 years since I did that. It's still difficult. She knows the consequences of the answer. And, and it's a hard thing to talk about. But you've got to get that. Because once you've got maternal drinking, got it. Then you can go to an expert, and you've got the police reports, you've got all the information, you've got all kinds of information. So let's go through it again. Do you see this? Eye contact, respectful distance, it takes a while. I have a relationship with her, obviously. And I've learned that you've got to do this now. Because I've yet to meet a woman who wants to hurt their baby. It, it, you know, and it's hard to do. You see, I'm not letting go. He's not. <laughs> you know? You know? And at the end of the day, um, you know, she's about the same age I am. But she's had a hard life. I've not. And she knows that I go home to in the suburbs and live in the... You know, she knows that. But there's a relationship skill here that you've got to ask this question. Okay? Did not, does that answer your question earlier? Yes. Okay, thank you. That, that's hard to do. I don't know about you, but when I was uh, uh, working as a lawyer, the idea is to do everything as quickly as you can. Because that's how you get paid. You know, how many clients can... You, uh, there are some times in what you call mentions court. You know mentions court? There are some days when I, we call it duty counsel. There are some days I'd see 135 clients. So I got real good at interviewing. I had a little sheet to fill out. And it was wham, bam, wham, bam. Not a lot of relationship there. And I quickly discovered after you know their clients. Here's another one I've got to tell you about. There's difficulties. A young sex worker, 14, 15 years old. I got to see her so often, and I stopped talking to her as a lawyer. Every time I talked, I just talked about condoms. That's all I would talk about, just condoms. Because she didn't know what they were for. And she would get paid extra if she didn't use one. Long story. But she said something to me, and I want you to think about the brain. She said, every night I go to bed, right, right up, every night I go to bed, I take the bed, and I put the bed over here, and I wake up in the morning, and it's gone. Okay? She gets 
paid to be sexually assaulted by guys who drive Volvos and Buicks. Okay? Because that's who picks up young girls. You've got to have a car. Okay? So that's the white master class. And she's a white girl that gets paid. How do you deal with that girl when it comes an issue of sexual assault? How do you ask her about what's normal sex? Can you see some of the problems? Okay, it's really difficult stuff. So, let's take a look at what we've done. We talked about maternal drinking. Okay? You've got to somehow put that into your protocols. And the Law Society of BC, which is not a radical organization, has a criminal checklist. They've now put into the criminal interview checklist for lawyers in my province, ask about fetal alcohol. Consider fetal alcohol. Because here's what happens. You're going to get all these official reports and they're going to go through all this stuff. They're going to give you all this word salad. What you need to do is get some information about maternal drinking, get some stuff from about fetal alcohol, and send it back to the report writer and say, you know, uh, we have confirmed maternal drinking. Here's some information about fetal alcohol. Here's some diagnostic guidelines. Would you please redo your report and consider fetal alcohol? Eventually, they're going to tell you to piss off. Okay? But eventually, someone's going to do it. Eventually, some judge is going to say, I want to know about this. But they're only going to do it if you ask. Okay? Think about how long it took in Canada for spousal assault to be against the law. I mean, did you see the problem we've got talking here? I've talked about primary and secondary behaviors. Do you get that? You get the materials. I've talked about Dr. Claren. You understand the concept of the external brain? Now, do you understand this idea of all these different diagnoses and that it's a spectrum disorder? And in your materials, um, there's a page about uh, the limits of the DSM-4. Does everybody know what the DSM-4 is? Okay, I bet you don't. What is the DSM-4? Really? Shout it out. You believe that? <laughs> the DSM-4 is a billing code book for American insurance companies. <laughs> Americans don't have national insurance. 40% of Americans have no insurance, and 10, 20, or 30% of them have very poor insurance. The DSM-4 is a descriptive book. Three from column A, two from column B, and you're in 1129. Have you ever wondered why it's a four-digit code? Okay. It's a descriptive way of unifying diagnosis. There are some positive things to DSM-4. There's a nice shiny cover on there. I think that's about it as far as I'm goes. But there are some positive benefits. There are some limits to it. It is not interested in causes, is it? Okay. Fetal alcohol. What's the cause? Mom's consumed alcohol. I'm sorry. That's it. Can you see the problem? The people who put together the DSM-4 have written us and said it is unlikely that fetal alcohol will be in the DSM-4 until at least 2025. Can you see there's some resistance to this? Do you know why I'm here today? I'm here today because of Janet Hamill, but because there was supposed to be a conference in Melbourne in November. Two weeks before the conference, some government official told our bias, cancel the conference or you lose your funding. That's why I'm telling you about the conference in September. I want you to write to our bias and say, keep it going. Okay, so don't think that there are not some issues in every world about how to deal with this. The beer companies and the alcohol companies in Canada are a significant lobby. Every piece of alcohol product in Canada that is exported has a label on it that says, danger. Drinking while pregnant may cause problems for your babies. If you buy it in Canada, Canadian alcohol, it doesn't have a label on it. The Canadian alcohol uh, lobby has stopped labels on Canadian products. So don't think it's not a, a powerful thing to deal with.